Shares. 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 Oh my god. Shares. Hi there, welcome to the Teeny Tinkers channel. I make ball drawing to doll and craft related content. But you know what I don't make is shoes. Yet. I have been wanting to try my hand at making ball jointed doll shoes. Now that's not to say I've never dabbled in BJD footwear. I have made knitted slippers before that turned out really cute. I actually have a tutorial for it here back in the archives. As well, I can also make socks and slipper socks and stuff like that. But I want to make shoes. Actual shoes. Wearable, realistic, or as close to realistic as I can, doll shoes. Because doll shoes are expensive really expensive. Sure, I can find cute pairs on Taobao, but the cute ones are going to cost you about 20 to 25 USD before shipping. And you can definitely get cheaper options, but they tend to be a little more basic. There's only so many options out there. And I want to make all the shoes. I want sandals and Vans and Converse and Doc Martens and all of these things. And I really want to be able to make them myself. But let's be honest, I have no idea what I'm doing. I have never really made shoes before. And honestly, a lot of the tutorials I find are just for boots. And boots are great, but they're not what I'm trying to do. So I'm almost going to be winging it. So that's what today's video is. It's taking you through the adventure of me trying to figure out how to make shoes. And if I come out with a handful, realistically, I'd be happy with one pair of usable pairs after this, I am happy as a clam. Because even if I spend $30 in materials to get two pairs of shoes, I have gained experience. I have gained skills. Is that the same as experience? And I still gained a pair of shoes that I made myself that will be one of a kind for the same price I would end up paying for a pair from Taobao. All right, that settles it. Let's go on a shoe making journey together. Let's go. The first thing I need to do is make shoe bases. I decided the best method for me would be to 3D sculpt and print the bases in resin. You can make bases with pleather, polymer clay, or really anything that you can mold into a shoe shape. Heck, 5 Minute Crafts make shoes out of hot glue only. Do not recommend. But for me, I import the file for the slim mini foot. I sort of morph this into like a foot blob, which I can then print out and use to form the shoes later on. In hindsight, I should have made the bases about 5% bigger to accommodate fabric and glue, as well as slightly wider. This will be a super easy fix in the future though. For now, I make a few bases with varying heights and designs. I end up with about five or six different usable bases. I have some super tall platforms, some chunky wedges, and some flat or sneaker bases too. This only took about an hour or an hour and a half or so. After plating and printing, I have a tray of raw white bases to work with, and a couple sets of the foot forms. And no, I don't have patterns or tutorials. I'm sort of planning on eyeballing the shoes I already have to see how they fit together and what fabrics to use. I also spend a few minutes perusing Pinterest for inspiration. Okay, officially feeling inspired. I pick out the first bases, some thicker ones with ridges, and get to work pulling out the fabrics I might use for these shoes. I got these pleather sheets from Amazon, and I love that I can get a bunch of colors in small swatches. Perfect for shoes, bags, and other small accessories. I think the simplest type of shoe to start with might be something like a sandal, which is more forgiving for fit. I saw this pair on Pinterest and immediately wanted to make them. The little daisies were so cute. So first I need to paint the base a similar green to the pleather so they match. I'm using gouache paint which typically needs many layers of MSC to grab onto, but since this resin is totally unsanded completely raw, I think it should stick anyways. Okay, getting to work on the straps. I need one wider strap for across the top of the foot as well as four vaguely triangle on a stick type shapes for the ankle strap. The foot mold thing comes in super handy for figuring out how big I need to cut everything. Then there's two long and skinny ankle straps, which I will use to fasten the shoe to the doll. 
But now it's time to sew. The plan is to flip the pleather and create a clean hemline. This isn't really necessary since pleather won't fray, but the sewing detail looks really nice and it keeps the edges sturdy. I do this for all of the straps. For the triangle shaped pieces, I just add stitch lines and trim the excess pleather to keep the look consistent. I cut out six white daisies next. It would be much easier in the future to use little flower charms. These were so tedious to cut out and so small, I felt like I had to keep trimming them down. Why do you have chain links, Rose? What does that have to do with shoes? Well, these little chain links are going to be buckles. Deal with it. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I think they work pretty well and give the indication of a buckle. I would definitely buy actual tiny buckles in the future, but since I was just trying this out, I don't mind at all. I use a gel super glue to attach the straps, curling them under slightly. Remember how I said I need to make the bases a smidge bigger? This is why. The fabric from the shoes takes up space in the sole, making the shoe smaller. This isn't such a big deal with sandals, but it makes some of the other shoe styles very, very snug. This is especially true for sneakers and boots. All the ones I make in this video end up too small and fit my EOSD sized feet much better. But with the front straps attached, I'm feeling good about these. There is potential. I have officially made a basic slide. But of course, we're not done with these yet. I begin attaching the other straps, alternating shoes so the glue has a chance to fully set. It also fully sets on my hands. I didn't get my skin stuck together, but it really feels gross. But this is part of the reason I use a gel super glue and not a liquid. The gel is much easier to control and it's thicker so when I press things into it, it doesn't run all over my fingers as much. This would have been a nightmare with liquid super glue, for me at least. Eventually, the shoe is together and I add super tiny Velcro squares under the buckles, which is more adjustable than snaps. In the future, again, I plan on getting actual buckles to make the straps really adjustable. But these shoes came out really awesome and I'm going to be using them a lot. Green isn't a color I usually gravitate towards, but I don't know, these shoes just speak to me, I guess. But now, I want to make more. I wanted to try making a shoe with a cardboard and pleather base, just to see how easy it was. It ends up being about the same difficulty as the resin shoe base, but it was fun experimenting. This shoe is a flat shoe, somewhere between Tom's and Van slip-ons. Maybe throw some slipper couture in there. I use a pinky purple pleather with lilac ribbon accents. By the way, I know I mentioned this pleather is from Amazon, but I've been getting some comments asking where I get my fabric from. And while I didn't want to make that a main channel video, if you go check out my second channel, Teeny or Tinkers, I have just uploaded a video going over all of my fabrics and where I got them. So if you're into sewing or you're looking to get into sewing, check it out. I will include all the links in the description. The trickiest part of this kind of shoe with the cardboard base was stitching the bottoms of the shoes so that they curved around the cardboard because the cardboard's not strong enough for me to just super glue the shoe to. This shoe went together pretty easy. Round cut for the toe, rectangle for the back. Then adding pleather to either side of the cardboard. I add more ribbon where the shoe meets the base to conceal the edge a little. It makes the shoe look nicer in my opinion. Overall, not a terrible shoe, only slightly more difficult to put together than the first one I made. Although aesthetically, I will say this is the style I liked the least of all the ones I tried. I finished them off with a tacky yellow buckle. <laughs> Why did I do that? And move on. Preparing for the next set of shoes. I go ahead and paint bases. I try a couple platforms this time and have fun with some cute color combinations. 
I did have to mix the gouache much thicker than I would if I was doing a face up. That's partly because I'm not building colors the way I would in a face up, and also partly because I wanted the colors to be fairly bright. I really like the colors I picked out though. Let me know what you think. I paint color by color to avoid too much color bleed, which works out pretty well. I figured I would go ahead and paint a few so I have them ready to go. But while the sealant is curing, let's take a minute to do Doll of the Week. This week's Doll of the Week comes from Moonless Shadow on Instagram. This is her hollow in the Waverly Purple Resin Tone. I love seeing my sculpts in group shots, it's so fun. Also, these eyes are seriously sparkly and cool. Thank you for sharing your doll. If you want to be considered for Doll of the Week, don't forget to post using hashtag Teeny Tinkers or Teeny Tinkers Dolls on Instagram. But remember, Instagram and I are beefing and the recent tag isn't working anymore. So if you want to be sure I see it, also be sure to tag at Teeny Tinkers. But let's get back to the video now. Picking out colors for some cool color blocked shoes and boots. I love color block things though, pastels, brights, doesn't super matter, but to be honest, that 90s style of pastel color blocking has my heart forever. I would personally wear this style every single day if I could find clothes. This is a sort of wannabe canvas shoe. This one doesn't turn out great, but now I know how I can do it better. But I figured I'd show you some of the process anyways. When experimenting and trying new things, it's okay to mess up. Failing forward, I say. What was it I said at the start of this video? I have gained experience. I have gained skills. Yeah, that. However, I'm super in love with these platforms and while they turned out a bit too small, they should work for my new petite BJD body, which has a more YoSD sized foot. I was too nervous to attempt working laces this time, so I just glued them on. Don't judge me, I will pick up some grommets or something to keep the fabric intact so I can run real laces next time. Okay, this style I really, really like. If you're new like me, I strongly recommend these. Basically, I was going for a sock boot style. That's literally what I made. Socks. But I did them double layered so they'd be stiffer. I sew up the socks and grab some spare resin legs I had from an old prototype. I slide the socks onto the doll, making sure the seam is on the bottom of the foot and up the back of the leg. Then I just put glue on the blue and pink base and press the foot down. A while ago, I made a pleather jacket inspired by the Still Into You music video by Paramore. I thought, why not make some boots to match it? This was a real challenge for me. I think a boot is one style of shoe I should really try to find a pattern for. Getting it to fit correctly on the foot and the calves and not be sort of saggy isn't the easiest when you're just eyeballing it. I used a Velcro strip up the back just to secure them. Again, in the future, I would use snaps. And I used the plastic links as buckles once again. I matched the colors as best as I could given what I had on hand. Okay, but here's where I go off the rails and just make a bunch of shoes without documenting the entire process. Sorry. I also completely ran out of super glue and switched to hot glue. Not exactly the most durable. And since then, I've gotten more super glue, but I was in the zone and I was going to use all the bases I made. I like these flats a lot better than the last set I made. Honestly, they remind me a lot of Vans, and I think I could slightly modify this to add some elastics and make them look just like Vans. I would also add the same kind of top stitching I did in the first set of sandals to make them look more polished. But to add a little more pizzazz, I did glue on some lace hearts, and they do look really cute, I think, in the end. While I don't totally mind painting the bases, I want to experiment with printing some in transparent resin or black resin, just some different colors. I think it will give me more options for shoe styles as well. But I whipped up some Love Core red and pink slides. Super basic, simple, but really cute. Basically following the steps from pair number one, but stopping at the big strap. 
I also did a red pleather heart peekaboo and made a pleather insole to match. I added red ribbon to the edges of the straps as well, which I think pulled it together. This pair was really fun to make and probably one of my favorites. Finally, another pair of sock boots, this time rainbow. I actually made an entire doll outfit in this fabric, so I think it's gonna make a fun full look. If I made these again, I think I could skip making the bottom of the sock and make it more like a footless sock or almost like a boot cover from a Halloween costume. That way it would sit nicer inside the shoe base and be easier to glue down right to the edge. I just did another pair of sock boots because it was getting late and I was tired. Plus at this point there was so much glue on my hands I was done. And since I'm done, let's check out what I made. Okay, so while some of them are not so great, some of them are really cute and definitely usable shoes. I'm really happy with this as my first go, and I know that it's only gonna get better from here. I will absolutely keep practicing because making shoes is something that would be so fun to add to my doll customizations. And since I keep making and collecting dolls, I'm going to keep needing shoes in the future. It will be really handy to just whip these up on my own. I have to say that the green sandals, the heart slides, the rainbow sock boots, and the purple heart Vans type shoes ended up being my favorites. With my least favorites being the sneakers at this point. I think they're good in theory, but not so great in execution. Adding a lining to the sneakers, as well as working laces, would definitely improve their appearance though. Also, I was right, and these rainbow boots do look great with this outfit. But let me know what you think, and which pair was your favorite. If you're already subscribed to my channel, thanks so much for subscribing. If you're new here, I hope you like the content and consider subscribing. As always, I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.